Hey, this is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. I'm going to show you how to create the look of a rubber stamp. Before we begin, if you want to know as soon as I upload new Photoshop tutorials, smash that subscribe button and please remember to click like. Create a new document by pressing Ctrl or Command N or go to File and New. Make its width 1920 pixels, its height 1080 pixels, and its resolution 72 pixels per inch. The color mode is RGB and 8 bits per channel. If the background isn't black, click it and pick black, then click Create. To zoom into your document, press Ctrl or Command and the plus key on your keyboard, or press Ctrl or Command 0 to fill the canvas. Open your horizontal type tool and check your foreground and background colors. If they aren't black and white respectively, press D on your keyboard. Invert the colors by pressing X or by clicking this icon so white is our foreground color. Open the type picker and pick any font you like. I'm picking Versa. If you'd like to use it as well, I provided its link in my video's description or project files. I'll make its size 450 points, but feel free to adjust this number based on the font you choose and the number of characters in your text. I'll make the aliasing smooth and center alignment. Click on your document and type out your text. If you're typing two or more lines of text and want to adjust the line spacing known as letting and or character spacing known as tracking, drag your cursor over your text and click the Character Panel icon or go to Window and Character. Place your cursor over the letting icon, which changes your cursor to a scrubby slider. Drag it to the left or right to decrease or increase the space between the lines of text. To adjust the spacing between all your characters, place your cursor over the tracking icon and drag it to the left or right. Once you're happy with the spacing, close the Character Panel and press Enter or Return or click the check mark at the top. Click the New Layer icon to make a new layer. Open your Rectangle tool and at the top, choose Shape. Click the box next to Fill and click the No Fill symbol. This makes the inside of the shape empty. Click the box next to Stroke and click White. I'll make the stroke's width 30 pixels, however, feel free to adjust this amount. Open the Stroke options and choose the solid line. Open the Align options and click the bottom icon, which aligns the stroke along the outside edges of the path. Open the Corners option. I'll click this icon, which creates rounded corners, but again, feel free to choose any of them. Drag the tool over your text. To hide the path, Press the Escape key twice. To center your text and the surrounding frame, Shift-click your text to make it active as well, and open your Move tool. Press Ctrl or Command A to select your document, and click the Align Horizontal Centers icon and the Align Vertical Centers icon. Then deselect it. We'll convert our visible image into a smart object so we can modify it non-destructively. To do this, Shift-click the background to make it active as well, and click the icon at the upper right. Click Convert to Smart Object. Go to Filter and Filter Gallery. Open the Brush Strokes folder and click Spatter. Make the Spray Radius 20 and the Smoothness 8. We'll make a new layer below the active layer by Ctrl or Command clicking the New Layer icon. We'll fill it with black, and since the background color is black, press Ctrl or Command plus Delete. Hide the Spatter filter and open your Channels panel. If you don't see it, go to Window and Channels. Ctrl or Command click the thumbnail of any of the channels to select its shape. Open back the Layers panel and make the Spatter filter visible again. Make the top layer active and click the Layer Mask icon to make a layer mask of the selection. The black area of the layer mask is hiding the ragged edges of the spatter layer that extends beyond the layer mask. It doesn't hide the ragged edges inside the white of the layer mask. 
Remember, with layer masks, white reveals and black conceals. Next, we'll add a grungy texture to our stamp. Make a new layer and open your brush tool. Invert the colors so black is our foreground color. After you install the set of brushes I provided, open the brush picker and scroll to the bottom of the list. Open the 1987 Design Grunge 2012 folder. Click the DSC1561.nef brush, which is 1500 pixels in size. Click your brush over various areas. If you need more room, zoom out by pressing Ctrl or Command and the minus key on your keyboard. Open your Move tool and zoom back in. We'll place all the layers into a folder by shift clicking the background to make it active as well and pressing Ctrl or Command G. Open the Channels panel and Ctrl or Command click any of the thumbnails to select its shape. Open back the Layers panel and make a new layer. Hide the folder. We'll fill the selection with any color for now. I'll fill it with the background color by pressing Ctrl or Command plus Delete. Then deselect it. If you want to use this image for the background, I provided its link as well. However, feel free to use any background you like. Open the stamp document and drag it onto the tab of the background. Without releasing your mouse or pen, drag it down and release. We'll change the stamp's color by clicking the adjustment layer icon and clicking Solid Color. Pick any color you like. We'll restrict the color to just inside our stamp by making the color into a clipping mask. To do this, hover your cursor between the adjustment layer and the stamp. When your cursor changes to this icon, click it. Another way to clip it is to go to Layer and Create Clipping Mask. Make the stamp active and change its Blend Mode to Multiply. Next, we'll make our stamp look well-worn by bleeding the paper through it. To do this, double-click an empty area of the layer to open its Layer Style window. We'll use the Blend If feature to achieve this effect. Basically, Blend If uses the luminosity of layers to blend them together. This layer represents our active layer, which in this case is the stamp itself. The underlying layer represents the layers under the stamp, which is our paper base. By dragging the slider of the underlying layer to the left, it causes the paper base to show through the stamp as if it's punching holes through it. We can smooth out the blending and create more of a transition between the two layers by placing our cursor in the middle of the triangle slider and pressing Alt or Option as we click it. This splits the slider in half. Now drag each half to separate them even more. Then click OK. Next, we'll resize our stamp by pressing Ctrl or Command T to open our Transform tool. Go to a corner and press Alt or Option as we drag it in. To rotate it, when you see this curved double arrow, rotate it to an angle you like. Drag it into position and press Enter or Return. Unlock the background and Shift-click the adjustment layer to make all the layers active. Then place them into a folder. Make a new layer and open your Gradient tool. Open your Gradient Presets and click the Black to Transparent thumbnail. Make sure the Linear Gradient icon is active. Place your cursor approximately here and press and hold the Shift key as you drag the tool down approximately to the middle. Pressing Shift kept our cursor perfectly vertical. Repeat this at the bottom. Shift click the folder to make it active as well and convert them into one smart object. Go to Filter, Blur Gallery, and Tilt Shift. Tilt Shift gives our image the effect of being photographed with a low depth of field. In other words, it blurs the top and or bottom while leaving the rest sharp and in focus. I did an in-depth tutorial on Tilt Shift, so if you'd like to watch it, I provided its link in my video's description. If you don't see the Tilt Shift's on-screen controls, press Ctrl or Command H. 
In the middle, there's a center pin widget that you could rotate to increase or decrease the blur. The area between the center pin and the solid lines are protected from being blurred. If we drag the solid lines away from the center point, there will be more of your image in focus. The areas between the solid lines and dashed lines are the transition areas. The blur grows progressively from the solid lines toward the dashed ones, where it reaches its full strength. The areas outside the dashed lines are 100% blurred. Next, we'll adjust the perspective of our entire image. Zoom out and open your transform tool. If you see this message, it's just letting us know that the smart filters will be temporarily turned off while we use the transform tool. Just click OK. Go to a bottom corner and press and hold Ctrl Alt Shift on Windows or Command Option Shift on a Mac as you drag it out to a perspective you like. Then press Enter or Return. This is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. Thanks for watching.